regretfully, there is very little common ground between the, the two parties that are in power today. In fact, I'm not sure there's any common ground between the two parties that are in power today. And, and as such, unfortunately, it will probably not be until we have the volatility in the market that goes with an impending default mm -hmm. that we will actually see cooler heads prevail, a compromise reach to kick the can again to the typical budget process where we'll see, I think, the real contours of what the magnitude of government spending cuts will be and or the nature of tax increases will be. So I think the debt ceiling will be a non-event until it is an event. Mm -hmm. That event will shake the confidence of the House and Senate. They'll find a common ground to kick the can again. They're very good at that. It's a, it's a national sport. And then we will address this in a haphazard, mediocre way later this year in our routine budget process. But there will be a compromise. I mean, God willing. <laughs> and, I, I, and I do think it'll be the market volatility that will drive that compromise to kick the can. Mm -hmm. And the reason we have to do this is America owes about $30 trillion today. And if we defaulted on our debt for even a minute, the increase in interest rates that we would pay for, for decades to come would cost our economy dearly. I mean, if you think about it, if, if our current $30 trillion of debt had to all be refinanced at today's prevailing interest rates, mm -hmm. we would spend about six and two-thirds percent of total GDP mm -hmm. just servicing our debt. That means you'd start work in January, and by roughly the second half of January, having had no money to take home, you would have worked long enough to pay the interest bills for the year on the U.S. debt. Mm 